You're listening to the Higher Ideas Podcast, where ideas grow. Connect on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, or higherideas.net. Now here's your host, I. Hello, fellow humans, and welcome back. So, once again, we dial the universe and see what we find. Switchboard, how may I direct your call? Get me someone awesome. You got it, honey. Please hold. So today I'm joined by Don, everyone. How's it going, Don? Hey, what's up? My name's Don. Another co-worker joins me once again, and I'm actually glad that you're joining me today because I've been actually hoping to have a good chat with you since I started working here, seeing you around the studio. Um, you're definitely an interesting character. You, you definitely stand out among the crowd because you're very... Um, small? No, you call yourself small. You're not actually that short. Yeah, thanks. You know, uh, but I remember one of the first... I like how you never say that in person when everyone else is around, but... <laughs> one, of, one of the first things I remember you saying is something about you described yourself as having a complex of acting big because you're short. Yeah, what right? is that called? That's the... Uh... The little man complex yeah, or whatever the, that the is, Yeah, the point complex. Right. Yeah. And I just thought that was really interesting that you actually pointed that out about yourself. So I sort of noted that in my mind. There's a guy that seems to be aware of himself. Yeah, well, um, you can't kid yourself if every single day you're doing the same thing over and over kind of thing. Right. I mean, I might have it. I'm guessing to a degree I do. But at the same time, I'm actually not, at least on the surface, don't feel uh, insecure about my size. That's just a joke thing. Yeah, right. People, and I also think it kind of breaks the ice for people, you know, like... He would think, oh, okay, this guy can make fun of himself. I can be more comfortable with him, basically. Yeah, you definitely have a talent for breaking the ice, and uh, you certainly seem to be one of the more popular people around here. Um, That's because I sling on cocaine. <laughs> ah, my name's Don. Remember, it's Don. That's it. Yeah, Don. Um, yeah. There is one thing, I guess, every guest I've had on the podcast so far, I've been pretty much going with, what do I think about first when I see that person? And that's what I have been mm -hmm. choosing to speak to people about. And for you, i got to say... Uh, of course, I know you won't be offended by this, but one of the thoughts I had when first running into you was, wow, that guy's got a big personality. I wonder how much of that is fake. How much of that Ooh, is really tough. him? I don't know. I guess it's hard for gauge, right? You never see me drunk, and I don't drink. I don't do drugs. Um, I like to think it's pretty, it's pretty real. I mean, I don't really change much. I don't really have mood swings. I don't know if you see me on a... I mean, you do at work. You see me on a regular basis. For me, usually a gauge of, a gauge of someone's... Uh, of how much someone's personality is a front depends on how stressed out they get and how they act when they're stressed out and uh, how consistent their attitude is. Mm -hmm. I like to think I'm pretty consistent. I don't see No, you are definitely consistent. That's the thing that's been interesting about... I, I kind of kept an eye on you after that, sorry to say. <laughs> but I was like, let's see if this guy changes, right? Let's see if this guy is consistent. Because i got to say, you have such a, a sort of a big personality and... A lot of times when you see someone with a big personality, there's a lot of fakery there. There's a lot yeah. of hiding insecurity. Yeah, I see that too. But no, I, I, I don't know. I'm just loud and obnoxious, and um, it's just kind of something that I am consistently. I think mm. I don't really think there's anything different, really. Um, I mean, I guess if you got to know me better, maybe you'd see that. It's hard to really tell somebody that you're not fake. You know, it's a difficult situation. It's right there. You kind of sound, sound fake. You know, right. It sounds insincere. It's like, no, no, man, I ain't fake. <laughs> worry about it, you know, it really is one of those things that you have to assess for yourself. And I guess as we work together, you're gonna figure it out. Right. And if you think I am, then you think I am. I, I've never actually been told. That. Actually, now that you mentioned, I've never been told that. So at least there's something there. I mean, people sooner or later will call you on something if they get fed up with you. you yeah. Know, they've called me a lot of things, but not fake. I definitely didn't see it negatively. I don't mean to come off that way. No, no, no. I understand um, what you mean. It's, it's just it's so. Yeah. I don't know if you realize what an interesting personality you are. Just, just in. It, it, when you're around, everything sort of lights up and becomes more interesting and fun. So uh, that's not something you see too much, at least around here. And um, that sort of automatically makes you wonder, is that an act, right? Yeah, yeah, and I can understand. I got to say, you've been pretty much the same from the start. I've been here for several months, so yeah. I'm guessing this is the real you, which yeah. is interesting. Yeah. It's actually really interesting to me because I've struggled myself in my life with letting the real me out. Um, and it seems like if you are honest with yourself, then you would say, this is the real you. This is just you being you out loud. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really inspirational. Oh, thank you. But, um, I mean, it's one of those things that, that I guess it's like, like we discussed this off, off the mic anyhow, but once you get comfortable with it, you are yourself, you don't really think much about it. You know, it's just one of those things, like, just like you don't really think much about, about the fact that she can walk so, so eloquently or confidently, 
unless you're in a wheelchair and you watch and pay attention. You know, look at those people that can so casually just use their legs and I can. It's mm -hmm. one of those things that once you're kind of used to it and you take it for granted kind of thing. It's actually, it's, it's really interesting that you mentioned walking because that just reminded me, when I was in high school, I was so uptight about trying to be quote unquote normal, trying yeah. to fit in, trying to figure myself out, yeah. that I remember being so uptight that I would think about every step I took, about the way my legs were moving, about the angle of my feet being planted on the ground and the rhythm with which I walked. And I thought about it so intensely that I would actually walk really weird. I would walk like some sort of tin man. So it's interesting that you talk about that. I mean, I've gone through quite a lot of change since back then. I mean, I'm getting more and more comfortable with Broken down a lot of barriers, obviously. You know what? It kind of helps. I know this sounds stupid. Um, if you, I don't know how much you prescribe to like science and chemical balances and whatever, but I, sometimes when I get anxiety or something, I convince myself this is just a chemical balance right now, like a flux, and I can just calm down and realize that I'm still the same person, but sometimes it's just a flux of like of nerves or a flux of whatever fucking chemical it is that gets released to make you feel like that, to so just overcome it. That Sometimes is all it takes for me. It's just like, man, whatever I'm getting right now, it's just something in my head that's going, blah, 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 blah. so I'm going to just ignore that and take the front of my brain that seems to be on my side and just kind of flow with it. So getting to this place that you're at, uh, this attitude about just being yourself and not worrying about it, were you always like that or was this a process? Did you go through a crisis when you were a teenager or no, I, were you just I, always like this? Yeah, I think I was. I can't wow. really think of a, a part in my life where, I mean, like, no, I, I was, yeah, I was fine. I mean... When people try to bully me, I fight back, and I'd have no bullies. That's basically it. That's that's all there is to it. Like that's mm. it's that simple. It's like typical shit. Like someone uh, someone approached me, I'd I'd um, I'd be receptive to them when I was younger. You know, and there wouldn't be any sort of clustering around or any sort of trying to find the next fad. I don't really care. You know, I, I usually the only fads that fall now nowadays are the ones that feel benefit me. Like I just got a smartphone recently. Only one I discovered I could sketch on them properly. I mean, I, I don't really prescribe to a lot of stuff, and I think if you don't, I don't know, you know, I think if you're not really swayed by a lot of things, it's a lot easier to be yourself. And I think a lot of that is actually I've been fortunate because I discovered I wanted to do aspects of my life, like follow art when I was younger, so I removed a lot of distractions. Like, I uh, I didn't spend a lot of time in bars or going out, getting drunk, or following the in crowd. Um, I never really had a problem getting becoming friends with people, but I never followed the in crowd, I didn't care. And uh, same with Bastion, same with, I removed the television from my room at a really young age, there wasn't any radio. And I think if there's not a constant influx of, like, media eating you down and making you feel insecure and making you feel like you can't belong unless you buy everything they tell you to or unless you follow the way they act or you, unless you watch the shows they watch, if you don't even, if you are basically ignorant of it, then you aren't aware of your, your shortcomings, quote-unquote. Mm. Because in reality, you don't realize there are any, no one's told you there are. And you haven't made yourself feel that there are, you know, so you haven't really been manipulated into being. I think that a lot of people, honestly, if they removed the media, like a lot of media influence in their lives, I think they become a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident. It's just that it's, it's honestly, we're bombarded by it. We're constantly reminded of what we need to have in our lives, what we don't have in our lives. You know all this. Everyone knows oh, yeah. this feel. But basically, I think I might be a byproduct of what happens if you really remove a lot of that at a young age from your life. Like, I removed TV when I was, like, grade 9, 10 in high school, and I hardly watched it when I was younger, really. I didn't bother, so I don't have mm -hmm. many, like, I don't have many pop uh, pop references in my life. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't have any idols like that. I don't feel like I need to achieve that, and I don't think I'm anything, uh, I actually don't think I'm anything special at all. I'm just, just comfortable in, like, being this, you know, I'm just blabbing like this. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the motivation behind cutting out TV at such a young age when most people fall into it hardcore? I just didn't, man, I... I didn't, like, uh, let's not go into the deep difficulties of my childhood. Everyone says they had a difficult childhood. I did. I had a difficult childhood. I had a sick parent. They passed away from cancer. So I had, like, a really early education on how shitty life could be, you know, mm. that kind of thing, which, leave it at that. Mm. But because of that, things were kind of put into perspective. My friends were at the age of, like, this happened in, in my younger years, from, like, 6 to 11. So six, five, six years of it, you know, and then you kind of have to force yourself to have, even unavoidably, have to have perspective. You know, so you've got like kids who are who are worried about you know preteen angst, and I, I really wasn't concerned about it. I really didn't care much when I got into my teenagehood. I was still overcoming all of that, so mm. a lot of it didn't really matter. I was just like, I don't really know what. Uh, why would I care what this person thinks? I mean, when I like you know, I've just been dealing with this shit. That's generally speaking, to me back then and to this day, much more difficult to overcome.
Mm. So I just think it kind of, it's just one of those things like when you over, when you feel overwhelmed in life, you zoom out and you realize I'm just a speck. Yes. And nothing else really matters. I mean, sorry, I don't really matter in the bigger scheme. And the bigger scheme doesn't really matter in the same sense because there's always something else. You know, there's always right. something else. So you just kind of find worth in what you think is most important in your life. In this case, it was realizing what's most important to me at that age and what I'd lost. And then realizing that the opinions of people I hardly even knew or didn't really matter at all. You know, there's a lot more to life. And a lot more in general just to like, if you want to be a happy person. I don't think I realized that. That's retrospecting, right? I don't think I realized that then. I just couldn't find it in me to give a shit. That's I couldn't amazing. be like, oh man, now I care what this dude who seems to be cool thinks. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, I don't care what this guy thinks. I, I blatantly don't give a shit what this guy thinks. Just another example of difficult life experiences making you grow. You grew well beyond your age yeah. from that difficult experience. Yeah, yeah. And to, I mean, to your benefit. Yeah. If you want to like see the... What, what's it called when you have a silver lining, silver at, the lining. End, a silver lining at the end of uh, and all that bullshit that would probably be it so I guess you gotta receive yeah. the, the positive although easily trade that for the other but if there is a positive there you go that's what it is if if there is one then again I could have gone down some sort of messed up route where I got into drugs and like fucking hated my life mm. I did I was when I was a young kid though I was also really I didn't get into any drugs or any drinking but I was like a, like a scrapper I used to fight a lot of people when I was oh, younger yeah. and stuff like that like a lot of you know, street fights and stuff like that. Never with oh, wow. weapons, but like a lot, yeah. Were you looking for them, or? <laughs> no, but there must have been anger there. I overcame it at some point, but there must have been like, I never picked on people. I didn't. I wasn't like a bully. But I did have a short, I actually had a short fuse for people that seemed to pick on others. I mean, just, there's a lot of those. So I used to like, I used to instigate fights with people that seemed like they were trying to use their size or like trying mm. to be, I don't know, man. It was like a personification of something. I don't know. It's like when you feel like somebody can't defend themselves. Made, you get frustrated with it and since I couldn't do anything about it with the person I had at home that was having problems I felt frustrated so when I see it happening in real life but I felt like I do, could do something I would step in yeah. sometimes sometimes needlessly sometimes yeah. foolishly but with like a lot of rage usually you know yeah. like a lot of frustration so you had frustration but you were letting it out in a heroic way you were kind of oh, using your yeah. energy for good you were helping yeah. the little man oh uh, yeah but no it's not glor I mean it was just yeah I know, it wasn't glorifying it uh, I know, I'm I, not trying to glorify it I'm but just basically saying... it was for myself still so basically right. I was I was doing something that was nonetheless selfish because... so you were feeding your ego yeah exactly a hero. right it wasn't, it wasn't I wasn't doing it I was doing it to help the little guy because I felt guilty not helping him out so I felt if I walked away, I'd be kind of like a coward, and I'd be going home and like saying, well, I guess I wouldn't be any different if I had a chance to stop this. So I was still doing it for myself. It wasn't mm. like I was going, hey, man, don't worry. I've got this. Yeah. Super mad. You know, <laughs> more like, yo, I'll, I'll handle this because I feel like I need to get my anger out, basically. You know, I right. need to get this frustration out. And in reality, it's not really about, about the kid or anything. I wasn't around to go, just believe in yourself. I usually yell at the kid after, actually. I'd be like, why don't you stick up for yourself? Why are you such a coward? That kind of stuff. So I wasn't exactly the nicest uh, nicest guy or, uh, around to them either. I wasn't like, hey man, it's okay, just get up and just brush yourself off. Yeah. I'll always be there for you. So you were like an anti-hero. Oh, fuck. I wasn't a hero. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I wasn't No, being, but you, yeah. you gotta realize there is something heroic oh. about that choice. I'm not trying to make you sound I, I like a superhero. I think it's really selfish. I don't, I don't it, see yes, it as that. Yes, it, it is a self... You did it in a selfish way, but the thing is, that guy that was picking on the little kid also had anger. Yeah. He wanted to get it out, and he yeah. did it in a in a negatively selfish way. Yeah. You did it in a positively selfish way. Yeah, so I see, I see what sense, you mean. Yeah. It's a lot better. Yeah, I see. I mean, yeah. I don't know what. I'll be honest with you, because of how I was set up at that point with my emotions, I don't think I could have flipped it around. I think there was just too much guilt and frustration. I felt like I had to go against like the Goliath or the David kind of mentality. You know, like take on the bigger, mm. uh, the bigger thing, because that way I feel like it'll calm me more. You know, I won't. I won't. I take on like the little guy or something that doesn't feel right. That feels that feels cruel, basically, and then right. feel appropriate. Um, I think we've all been in those situations though, where you feel like you need to step in for somebody. That's definitely not just a me thing. I just had rage. I think if someone did, they would find ways. And yeah, granted, I'm I'm happy with the fact that I didn't go down the bully route. Mm. Granted, that would be shitty. Although like a like a small bully is weird. I think you have to be. Uh, yeah, I mean it's possible, I guess. But um, but yeah, I, I see what you mean about that. Uh, the funny thing is, though, ironically, a lot of those guys that I that I would fight, a lot of those guys that were kind of like, I guess you would call bully, bullies now, quite a few of them I actually became friends with later. You know, mm -hmm. so like they kind of, I don't know, I guess they had their own problems, and you could kind of connect with them, and um, we just kind of became friends. Not like the best of friends, but we used to do things together, you know, play ball, play basketball, play uh, football, shit like that. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I used to be in a, so I used to play basketball, but I used to, uh, uh, basketball and football, but I used to also play um, a chess 
And I remember some of them, one of them actually got into the chess team. And he was like, we're talking about like a jock, jock. You know how they don't want to be associated with any of that? Right. But he got into it. Like he got into it. He became part of the chess team. He got more comfortable. And that's one of the times I realized, yeah, you know what? It's kind of cool. Like, you know, you kind of, if you're like yourself, I realized then I became a little self-aware of the fact that I showed him that I could be both. That's one of the only times in my life where I felt like, oh, you know, like if you're yourself, other people then get comfortable and they kind of feel like they can be themselves. Yeah. That was a bit of a stoke of ego for me because I was like, that was kind of cool. You know, I feel like I did influence him for real. You know, I joke about that sometimes, but that's the one time in my life where I was like, that's cool. You know, I feel like I showed him that he was interested in this. Maybe from when he was younger, he was looking at it from his peripheral, but he was afraid to really look at it. Because people would be like, yo, what are you doing? You right. Know? Don't right. Be, you're not a fucking nerd. You know, but then since he saw other people doing it and they were fine with it and they were still playing ball and they were still playing football and they were still playing, you know, like soccer or whatever. And they weren't being criticized that maybe he could do it. And he did. And he was he was pretty good, too. He wasn't shit or anything. So that's the part I was proud of, that he actually didn't miss something that he was good at. You know, right. It's kind of sad and tragic to see a person who has potential avoid what they could be good at simply because they missed Because they're trying to fit into a role. Yeah, exactly. Fit see, into a role. Pre- this kind of touches back on, on what you talked about earlier, which is that sense of trying to be cool. Yeah. And I was just sitting on the subway last week looking at um, a kid, and here's where I'm going to sound like an old man. I was Cuban watching. Old, yeah. I, I, was, I was looking at his uh, pants. He had the sag thing going on, yeah. right? The full ass out in the air with his underpants. Yeah. And I was looking at this. Always kid. tasteful, really. Yeah, yeah it, it, he he was alone, right? So when when people that are trying to fit into a group like that are alone, their true self kind of comes out, I think, rather than if they're with a group of friends trying to impress each other. And I was watching him sitting there and. He obviously wasn't the kind of kid who would do this, right? He, he just looked like a very intelligent and, and sort of independent. Uh, I just had a different vibe off that mm-hmm. kid than, than, than someone who would have that saggy pants thing going on. But then he got up and I saw the sagging pants and I was like, oh man, why, why are you doing this, yeah. right? And I got to thinking about the whole cool thing, right? And the thing that's really ironic is I think the second you're trying to be cool, trying to do something like that, sag your pants, wear a certain you're style uncool. of fashion, yeah. you're uncool yeah. immediately. Wasn't there a Simpsons uh, show about that? Yeah, but but I was just thinking about that, that really being cool is basically what you did. It's taking your own path and saying, you know, to hell with everyone else, and I'm just going to be me, and that's what becomes the new cool. And then everyone tries to copy that person, and then it's they're not cool. So it seems to be when you're the second person there, it's not cool anymore. Yeah, the key yeah. to being cool is just being you and having no regard for what anyone else thinks. But I think you're caught as soon as you. I, I think I agree with you, by the way. But as soon as you, as soon as you look at the media to tell you how to be cool in any way, yeah. right away you're caught. Well, of course, because they're way late in the game to yeah. cashing on to what's hip. Yeah, and uh, I, I mean, I see what you're saying, and I guess, but then again, in. In retrospect, being honest with myself, I don't think it's cool or uncool. But I think in a realistic setting, I don't think if like if you're in high school or in your college, in your college, I was able to pull it off. I think half out of luck. Sometimes it's just luck, man. Sometimes it's the way you present yourself. Sometimes it's the people you come across. But I didn't drink right after grade uh, nine, ten. I didn't drink at all. I decided mm-hmm. uh, uh, I. I drank before I was of age, and then after when I came of age, and a little before that, I was like, "No, I'm gonna do something stupid." Never really got into drugs, but I don't think you'll ever really feel cool in an, in school or in an in crowd if you do that. I yes, I yes, okay. Just to be clear, to get out of the way, and not to make it seem like I was a loner. Yeah, I I, I was part of you know the cool whatever the fuck the crew, you know, like whatever you want to call it, the group of people. But I didn't do it. Like I just didn't really care. That doesn't mean they followed me though. They didn't. They did their right. own thing too, right? right? And they had their own in crowd of of um of drug dealing and their own crowd of of uh, alcohol and their own crowd of doing certain things that I simply made really clear I wasn't a pro- uh, part of. And because of that, I was still a part of them. But I always was. I always felt removed. I always felt like I really didn't give enough of a shit. And I felt like there was always a rift because of that, right? Mm. Like I I feel like you know Monday comes along. Hey, what'd you do over the weekend? Oh man, I got shit facing. I didn't. You know, like I'm not where that conversation ends. You know, that's it. Because if you go into what you're going to talk about, it's going to make it seem like you're kind of like pretentious. Well, I yeah. spent the weekend doing some more. Then I went with my pops and spent some time with him. And then I went and saw some friends. You know, then I helped the lady move. And, you know, I did some groceries. And then, like, what you do? Oh, I was hand nursing a hangover. It makes it seem like you're rubbing into their face how you're accomplishing shit. Right. And on the other hand, it makes it seem like you're not doing anything that's exciting for your age or anything. Mm. So there's a rift there. There's a certain, right. like, divide that is unavoidable basically if you're going to go down like a certain path that's your own what i'm saying is if it's your own path whatever it is you will most likely find yourself kind of removed and isolated and not in a cool way like a 
fucking lone wolf. Yeah. I'm just saying you will find yourself removed and isolated. That's just a fact. Um, so yeah, it, just hearing you describe this thing um, kind of makes me realize that we're similar in the way that we're both sort of outlier personalities. Yeah, yeah. But the difference is you're very socially adept and I am a social wreck. I wouldn't so, say a wreck. Oh, well, I'm getting better. Okay, yeah. I got to say I'm getting better in this job in this environment i've done a lot better than i usually do in a new mm. group i've reached out and pushed myself to Good. meet a lot of people and not lock myself down to one or two friends yeah that's and, the best thing you, you can know, do yeah and i've met awesome guys like you and it's, it's really awesome. there's lots of awesome people around here no you're awesome Trust okay me. stop please that's all. yeah <laughs> and you gotta uh, edit some of this you can't leave that on you can't leave i can say on. whatever i want it's my podcast okay. um but that that that's a recent development. I struggled for most of my life trying to figure out how to manage this puzzle that is other people. Oh, but yeah, in, in in high school, I was really really uptight. Like I said, not only that, but I was censoring myself to try and again, like you mentioned, trying not to alienate people. Yeah, I felt that if I spoke about what I really think about and spoke with even the vocabulary that I really use in my head. Yeah. I would have alienated everyone. They would have mm -hmm. thought I was pretentious. They would have thought I think I'm smarter than everybody. I read an article about that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, pretty much exactly what you're saying. And in general, it seems that people who have a higher aptitude for lay down simply just English in general, they usually dumb it down. Dumb it down, right? Yeah. Of course. Unfortunately, that also means that those other individuals don't learn or don't experience any new vocabulary. So we kind of dumb down our language and dumb down our form of communication. Exactly, right? When you dumb yourself down, you're kind of bringing down the standard for That's everyone. Right, yeah. Whereas Instead if... of demanding a standard that they have to actually adhere to and like rise towards. Personally, I would appreciate if someone had a better vocabulary than you, which I think there are quite a few people around. Um, I'd want them to use it so that I can go away with them. Did that guy just say? Or just simply, what does that mean? You know, what did you ask? What did you just say? I'm not sure what that means. Right. Right, and I, I would dumb myself down in exactly that way. So yeah. I guess that that was the motivation, trying just to fit in, trying not to make anyone feel insecure. But uh, in the recent changes in my life, including starting this podcast, one of the things I immediately had to confront was my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Because in the first early attempts I did to record myself, I faced this thing that I hate about myself, which was dumbing myself down. Yeah. And I, this has been a great chance to finally embrace my real inner voice yeah. and speak directly from the inside instead of going through all these filters of course yeah. and one of the big frustrations i had in high school was this feeling that i had this thick thick mask on that i couldn't get rid of mm. it was it was i felt trapped inside myself and yeah. i struggled with that kind of feeling quite a bit almost that it starts to I imagine like in, when i imagine how it would be i to me it seems it's stifling like you almost yeah, can't absolutely. breathe right no it was i like, was literally almost can't breathe sometimes because yeah. of it yeah, it was very, it was, it was really tough. And it's weird because at any second, I could have just decided to drop that thing. That's right, yeah. Right? But then fear stops you. And yeah. Fear is so interesting. I mean, it's it stops us from accomplishing It's the strangest so thing. It's like self-preservation is being part of the pod, but in a way it's, I don't know if it really is <laughs> that beneficial. I think it just depends, right? I think it's a skewed fear. And that's, again, just tying it back to what I think. I don't want to blame, blame it on one thing because it, there isn't just one thing. It's the way you've been brought up. It's the environment you've been brought up. It's your friends. It's your family. It's the way everyone else seems to interact with each other. But I think a lot of it is also just just the social media when it's teaching you how to how to be and who to be and how to belong. And then once you fall into one category, not only do you look like this category, you act like this category. You behave like this category mm -hmm. does because otherwise you're going to be abnormal. People are going right. to notice and then they're not going to know how to gauge you know how to act with you and therefore you're going to make yourself be uncomfortable or make yourself uncomfortable and they will be uncomfortable around you. Right. So, you know, you want to avoid all of that and out of sheer fear and necessity to belong, we generally kind of conform. But I, I think a lot of it is simply that we just we just kind of think too much about, about how we reflect on society and how we reflect. I think the best thing to do um, is actually nothing to highly of yourself. I'm not saying you, I'm saying everybody. Mm. Like, I don't actually, because this has been like a whole fucking, like, ego bullshit boost, but in reality, I don't even think that highly of myself. Like, my art, I look at it and go, I, I can, there's a lot of things about me that I don't take that seriously. Uh, I like to make fun of myself. But, um, but I think there are a lot of people out there who are really uncomfortable with themselves mm -hmm. and don't have a genuine persona that they're uh, reflecting on everyone, yeah. or even for themselves, but then are really really defensive of what they put up. Even though in reality, if they let it be criticized, then they'll realize how that persona is a joke and they can just be themselves. Right. You know, because then people will then look at you and go, well, you're being yourself. That's not as funny as trying to be a hipster. You know, it's the, it's not really that people dislike things like a hipster. It's that people fucking dislike somebody who's 
literally taken that definition and pretty much adhered to all the rules of it, or jock, right. all the rules of it, or thug. You know, like, right. like you know, exactly. like, what are you doing? Try to make yourself fit into a box to yeah. feel accepted. Exactly. That's the that's the joke. It's the fact that they're like a walking character. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You touched a little bit on something a second ago there, where you mentioned that other people's opinion of you kind of holds you down to yeah. their expectations of you. And that's something I've run into quite a lot over the last year where I've been trying to make huge leaps and bounds in, in changing myself mm -hmm. and, and sort of getting more into who I really am and letting myself out, like I said. But I've run into issues where sometimes I make a huge leap over a weekend of profound self-searching or, 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 or just having Some an epiphany here. all of a sudden, right? And then I want to incorporate that new sort of value into the way I behave and it's funny how the instant you run into someone that expects different of you it kind of knocks you right back yeah. down where you were yeah. and that's that's a really fascinating thing that I've been running into a lot as I've been trying to make these quantum leaps in, in development and that to me is an argument for working on yourself all of us yeah because you never know by not working on yourself who else you're keeping down that's right yeah by expecting everyone else to that's be as low point. as you may be staying at that's that. actually an interesting point too. yeah I see what you mean because people also threaten when they see somebody else exactly it's like the crabs in a bucket effect right yeah. they see someone trying to climb up they want to pull them back down i never heard that crabs in a bucket that's cool yeah i'm not sure how, what that exactly means but my sense is that when you have crabs in a bucket they kind of stay calm until one of them tries to climb out and, and then they will go all crazy. sort of go to town on him and try to climb over his back and like it, oh, it sort of becomes a frenzy wow. So I, I think that's what that expression means. I'd have to double check. But um, yeah, so, so I definitely feel that a lot through this experience of trying to transform myself, especially from family members who have seen me go through hard times. There have been times in my life where, frankly, I've been a total ass to everyone around me mm. because I was suffering and I was going through stuff and I had no regard for anyone else. I was just sort of like, get out of my face. Mm. I don't need you right now. And they stuck with that image of me. And sometimes when I try to become a more open, loving, friendly person, they still have that impression of me and they cling to the impression that they've made so hard that they can't see that I'm changing. Mm -hmm. Or they feel it's artificial now. It's... I, I don't think it's that so much. I think it's literally they don't see the change because they only see the image of me that they have. Damn. And they're holding on to that because they're upset at it. Yeah. And, and so it's like this big tangled web of interconnectedness that causes anyone to hold someone down who's trying to change. Well, you got to etch away at that. For exactly. It's, it's, it, it, it slows down the process dramatically is what I'm saying. If I could go off to another country for a year and hide in a cave, I would grow monumentally and then I'd come back and they'd just have to accept where I was. Yeah. Right. But having absolutely. to do it around other people, it's a lot, lot slower. Well, you, you see that even with like what you just mentioned there, but if you, you know, like a whole new start, a fresh new start, you see a persona, uh, a shift once a lot of kids go from uh, elementary to high school. You know, right. you see a lot of personas try to at least try to take a new approach. You know, like, like okay, yeah. now I have a new start. Now I'll be a cool yeah. kid. Now I'll try to be this or that. I just saw quite a few individuals from uh, from my elementary school when I saw them years later, or they went with me to this high school I went to. They would suddenly try to be somebody else, and you'd realize right away they weren't fitting in properly, or it was just a bunch of one of these sitting together, but they were never comfortable. You know, they always had that uncomfortable air to them, not understanding what this is all about. It's just honestly, it's like, it's really just taking up a, a different, different personality almost, you mm. know? and it's kind of weird to be honest. But it's kind of cool that we have those chances when we're changing schools as kids from from primary school to high school to college. You have these all these these sort of landmarks where you get to reinvent yourself. But once you get into adulthood, that kind of stops. You're just yeah, that's cruising a, that's through. An point, yeah. You never get to reinvent yourself. You never have this huge change unless you change careers or just move away and try to consciously have a new life for me it just seems strange because you're running away that's basically what you're doing it, it might be running away but it, it, like you I, don't, I don't know i'm not sure well basically think about it like you go into elementary and then if you change and you go to high school then all the people in high school then understand you as this new person granted then you're comfortable with that but you will always be uncomfortable seeing those people from elementary Yes, that's All those true. people from that timeline. It's because that you feel that expectation pulling you that's back. Right, that's right. That's what I mean. Exactly. You were around yeah. them. So what I mean is that in a way, in a strange way, you're kind of cutting off a, a tail of your life. Mm -hmm. You hope that you'll never see those people. Generally speaking, you never see those people again. Then if that happens after high school, same again. And that's the part that to me is weird. It's, it's kind of like, well, this is more what made you. Not, not really something you should be ignoring if you can help it. You know, you made mistakes, but I don't know if you should entirely ignore them. Or just act like they never existed and you're a totally different person. Right. I just think, I don't know, I just feel like, I think you would, be, you, a, a person in general would have been probably 
more self-assured if they had finished high school deciding this is who I want to be next year when I start right. college. And I will then make sure that in high school people know this is who I am by the end, I, uh, by the end of it. Right. You know, so I don't just walk away from this being one thing and then start college an entirely different individual. You know, because it, it will be artificial, basically. It will be. It will not be natural. You know, right? Unless, unless you start college, and all of a sudden you decide you're going to be yourself. You know, that's it. Like I'm sick of being what I was in high school, trying to fit in. I'm just going to be myself. That's fine. That's actually perfect if you can. But that usually isn't the case. Usually they just start off in a different persona. And while it is cool that you can shift around. To me, it's like it's it's not really a skin to put on like you can uh, on your on your phone or on, on like an app or something. It's not just a skin or an overlay. There's a lot more that comes with it, you know. Mm. There's a lot of baggage, and no matter what you put, what persona you put on, you're still going to be dealing with that behind you, you know. And now there's going to be a compound effect. It's like this is how I failed high school. This is how right. I failed elementary. Right. And this is how I don't want to fail college. And as you start to fail it, all those other demons or those other echoes of those other times in your life. But those other people you were start to come back. Right. right. So it's just a multiplication of the same mm. shit. How you're a failure no matter what you do. That I, I think I think that also has something to do with constantly trying to be someone who you actually aren't. Yeah. I exactly. think in those cases someone is trying to be someone they idealize in their mind. Yeah, exactly. But it's yeah. not really them. Yeah. And I probably had a story much like what you described where every phase of my life I've kind of cut away and let it go because it was a horrible time and I was confused and trying to figure things out and like we all are. But the thing is, every step of the way throughout my whole life, on the inside I've known exactly who I am. Mm. And all of those difficult times that I've tried to cut away and escape from have been me trying to be more like the people around me yeah. and not trying to be myself. That's right, yeah. I imagine so really. finally, finally in this phase of my life, I'm finally starting to have sort of the, the confidence or the, the, the maybe just being tired of trying to be quote-unquote normal or standard or fit in and blend in. I mean, that's never going to happen for me. And I'm trying to finally build myself as I am instead of some sort of false mask. Mm. I guess that's the most valuable aspect of, of kind of like shedding that skin and, mm. and reimagining yourself is simply that, that you, sooner or later, if you come, you become of age, or come of wisdom, come of mind or whatever, you realize that, okay, none of this is working. The mm. only thing I can do is be myself or be unhappy. That's it. Right. So that's basically my two choices. Right. Be myself or forever be uncomfortable and unhappy. You know, I, I, there's not one persona that I can fit in. The only persona I can be is myself. Otherwise... I will always have anxiety. I will always have some issue. I will always feel like I have to conform or something. So I mean, I mean, these are, these are kind of like topics that I've, you know, like I, it's hard for me to gauge. Remember, because like I, I, I just had a different perspective when I was younger. So I, it's hard for me. I just I mostly know it because I've seen it, my friends go through it, right? Mm. And from what you're describing, I can echo that. But to me, it, it's just one of those issues that that it just really helps. Always helped me to like just step back and go. I don't know what I think. People think of me, but I also don't think they really think too much of me. Like, they don't really think that much of me. They have their own lives and their own obsessions and their own issues. So no matter what I do, they're going to just kind of brush it off and not really think too much because everyone's self-absorbed. Right. No one thinks as much about you except you yourself, usually, right? Unless you've got a a fucking obsessed stalker or something. Right, right. Or you're like some kind of media figure. Yeah, exactly. Something some freaky like that. Right. I mean, not not something exceptional like that. But, um, But in general, whatever you do, you will remember most likely and think about a lot more than that person on the subway who saw you for a second and then we'll see you again, right? You're they talking might, to me, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just mention it. You know, they just they'll mention it to their friend, but they they won't even be able to pick you out of a line. They'll be right. like, I don't know who the hell that guy was again. You know, they just like, I'm sure come to me all the time, you're like, Oh, you remind me of I mean uh, come to me all the time and go, Oh, I just saw your your double over the weekend. You know, you, there's nothing that physically there's nothing that special about us. Our attitudes what carry us and in general, for the most part, the more comfortable you are with yourself, the more singular you'll be and the more they'll remember you then, kind of thing. Mm. Otherwise, if you're just a jock, they'll remember you as a jock. You know, if, they, if you're just a, just a, a nerd, they'll remember you as a nerd. It doesn't really make much of a difference, I don't think. All right. You know? Did I ever tell you about my time in Occupy Toronto? No. So when I went to Occupy Toronto, um, I faced the same sort of wall of fear that I faced trying to talk to people on the subway. I have all these insecurities that actually aren't me these are insecurities that got built up from just feeling attacked by people a lot in my life and just slowly bogged me down when i was a kid 
my parents told me a story that there was this band playing on a stage at some sort of outdoor event, and they lost track of me for a second, and next thing they know, I'm gone. And they're looking around trying to find me, and they find me on the stage with line dancers trying to dance along. That's cool. That is so unlike me today. That's I, cool. I don't even dance. So when I hear that kind of story, I got to ask myself, who am I really, right? Deep yeah. inside, I don't think I'm that inhibited around other people. I don't think I really care. Even when I was maybe seven years old, I remember having no problem getting up on a stage. I mean, I had no problem expressing, Something just expressing happened. my opinion. During high school is when I got crushed. That's when... It was a really, really tough time. What so. did it though? Was it individuals or was it more just social necessities? Yeah. You feel like you it was, had to it was fit trying in. to fit in. Yeah. It started really bothering me that I was different than everybody else. Yeah. When people really start noticing that you're different, when people start getting into cliques and start getting yeah. into certain, you know, mainstream media things, and I'm just not interested in any of that. I was more like an old man than a young person. Mm -hmm. I mean, my interests were classical music when everyone else liked, you know, boy bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was always a mismatch at that point that became very obvious and you know people are cruel in high school they're insecure themselves so they tend to attack people that are different a lot more so that just I, I was feeling the lash of a lot of that stuff on top of the pressure I put on myself to try and fit in and trying to lie to myself about who I am and, and trying to, to, to be more like the others that that was just really destructive to my character in the long run because you know I'm still feeling the effects of it today in this uh, subway expedition that I'm trying to do but uh, what I was getting at is when I went to Occupy, I, I ran into that same limitation. Uh, the first day I went to Occupy, I was just me, right? And I did nothing. I just walked around, I looked at everyone else doing stuff, talking, having great conversations, and I was too shy to do anything. I, I, was, I went home frustrated with myself. And then I just thought about it and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go in disguise. And I painted my face. Hmm. I put a big black maple leaf on my face. Mm -hmm to to apparently be anonymous and i went back to the camp the next day and it was like night and day huh? when i got to that camp all of a sudden i was nobody i wasn't me i was a new person i was a newborn and i got to form myself the way that i want myself to be the way that i know that i am and i, I through the month or so that that camp was active i built i saw myself as i really could be and it was something really really awesome um i, I was affecting everyone around me I was I was I was I was getting everyone excited and I could see this sort of power to to affect change that I could have if I really just embrace myself and embrace you know just just having confidence to speak and 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 again this is one of the first times where I had stopped censoring my speech uh, making it dumber mm -hmm. I finally let myself out completely and people were impressed and it was it was a really enlightening experience to see that happen and that's when I started realizing how handicapped I was by all these issues of the past. And um, I guess now here I am at it again, creating this character called I. And in a way, I'm kind of reproducing that, trying to, on this podcast, incubate this person that I, I know I am. Uh, on the podcast, I speak as the person that I am, not the person that I pretend to be when I try to fit in. And uh, Yeah, just for the listeners, he's actually Jamaican yeah. outside of this podcast, yeah. which is weird, but... Yeah, yeah, I got dreads and everything. <laughs> but so I'm trying to sort of do this in a way where I'll be able to drag it into my real life and, and finally become me. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's been a very interesting year since Occupy. It was really Occupy that started it all. Um, and after that, I went through this crisis of once the camp was gone and I couldn't paint my face anymore. I sort of fell back to who I was in a sort of depression or something. I hadn't I didn't have that fertile ground anymore to grow myself that's interesting to me because i feel like once you see that you're capable of it and it's not just something you've been whispering in your ear you know you are able to do it yeah. i mean that that pain on your face didn't make didn't actually give you the power the knowledge or anything it was just the proper uh wall to make you feel comfortable yeah. i guess in that situation exactly. but you have it all you really do have it then all and you feel proud of what you and who you are around individuals and people so i'm surprised that that you couldn't after like a month be you know, conf convinced that you have it in you, though. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a very strange month. I mean, I would go home and I remember uh, my parents sort of remarking, "Whoa, look at you walking around! What's what's going on? <laughs> walking around, right?" Like, my dad was, "Hey, you're standing up all straight and you're looking all proud of yourself, Mister Big Shot." You know, yeah. and in a weird way, that was even though that was a joke, that was almost an attempt to pull me back down. Yeah, right. So, well, remember there was some. I do see what you're saying. I do, but remember though, sometimes people 
sometimes we see the uh, the underlying current of a negativity when it's not always there. Right. You know, like, well, I'm telling you that to, like, tell yourself that the next time you hear stuff that. Because it might just be, like, a simple pun. Like, it might just be a joke. Because otherwise it's sentimental to you. Like, you know, you're going to think everyone's always making a joke just to put you down instead right. of just kind of tease you, right. basically. And after that point when the camp basically got shut down, my growth basically got shut down. Yeah. That, that was really rough because then all of a sudden, damn, this person I was becoming is dead. And so it was that the gods of the podcast birth gathered on the Mount of Podcastus decided that what followed in this conversation was too awesome to be heard by mortal ears. And so, summoning their combined strength, they set forth a wave through the fabric of the galaxy and the universe, which in this moment collided with the recording device held by I, and caused it to mysteriously stop functioning, ensuring that what followed was never heard by mortal ears. However, the gods of the podcast verse have no power over the human mind, and one man, I, would venture forth, carrying with him the message of what followed. And through crossing many deserts and forging many rivers, he now arrives to deliver that message. So that was a dramatic way to explain that the recorder mysteriously stopped recording the best final part of that conversation and rather than try and re-record it we just left it as is and so it falls to me to explain the gist of what followed in short we talked a little bit more about occupy and the transformative power of this persona that was created and how important it is before turning to any process of trying to change yourself the most important thing first is to know yourself Look deep inside and find out who you really are. What your real values are, what your real desires are, what your real motivations are. In short, the seed of your soul, the center of you. It's, it's something that many people go around ignoring. But if you can find it, and I think most people have a general feeling of what it is all their life, Find that and follow it. And then you can use all sorts of tools, like creating a persona, um, to bring forth this thing inside yourself that is really you. Past all the layers of chains and saddles and bars that we erect around ourselves to try and fit into a box. In this era of online personalities, alternate lives that we lead in this alternate world, it's easier than ever to have the mentality of creating a new you. So if there is anything in your life that you want to change, it's as simple as deciding that tomorrow you are someone else and trying to enact your true motivations and your true self and bring it into the world. Well, thank you to my friend Don for joining me. It was a really, really great chat, and I hope you guys got something out of that. Till next time, keep thinking. <laughs>